Uh, Does that it? happen? Have you ever heard of that happening? I've heard of people maybe using it as an excuse of like, you know, the tainted supplements or yeah. you're like, oh, this protein was mixed in a vat that was used for this other thing. And it's like, I want to believe you, but I'm, I'm calling bullshit. Yo, so I know I said I wouldn't do it, but I actually kind of feel as if I'm doing a public disservice at this point to not be talking about something that I know a lot of things about. And that is performance enhancing drugs and people popping on a drug test at the semifinal level and the freaking messages that come out. And if anything, I've said that I'm the dot connector. So I'm gonna connect some dots for you. I'm gonna speak about the things that I know about. I know these things, remember, through lots and lots of research that I tried to do and phone calls that I had with experts in the field where I gotta pay hundreds of dollars for tens of minutes with these people so I can ask them questions to give the answers to you guys for free on the internet. If you don't like the answers to this stuff, understand that I'm not trying to teach people how to do these things. I'm trying to talk to the person who gets actually blindsided and believes the people who says that there's a tainted supplement in every corner of the fucking gym. So if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the scientific details of this shit, you might want to stop watching this video right now. I couldn't give two fucks if it does this to your liver or that to something else. I care about the general picture. I care about the implications that it has on the public. I care about the health ramifications of these things. But if you want to try to throw down the hammer with your knowledge on some stupid thing that you might have Googled while you were watching this and you want to make a comment on it, get the fuck out of here. But if you want to find out what Matt Frazier had to say in relation to all of these people, tainted meat and tainted supplements and all that bullshit, then continue to watch the video. Matt Frazier did go on the Joe Rogan podcast. Everyone remembers that, but it is a three hour video and there are certain things things that stand out to me because when you have a lot of information in your head about something, things sound different to you than they might sound to other people. And the things that I really remember from that is that he addresses the entire contaminated substance thing. And when he hears it, he knows that it's a crock of shit. What he hears is the exact same thing that I heard on one of my 30 minute phone calls for $400 with an expert in the space where I asked, what's the deal with these contaminated supplements? Like what, why do they keep on happening? Like why haven't the athletes figured anything out yet? And I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. It's just going to take a minute. The first thing with that is that there is a lawyer out there apparently. This guy who's a lawyer that like as soon as he hears about someone popping, he approaches them and is like, I will get your sentence reduced. Pick out of these seven excuses. Oh boy. And like he, it's the, that deals you it's cards. the same packet and he just changes your name in it. He sends it off. But it's like some of the excuses have been like, uh, oh, my boyfriend was doping. And he and, shot his doped was, up loads inside of me. So one girl said, like, I went down on my boyfriend and like, I that. <laughs> one was I was making out with my boyfriend. and He was taking something that like you hold under your tongue. And Matt Frazier brings him up and my guy on the phone call brought him up. And I don't know who the fuck it is, but he sure seems to have made a killing. But he doesn't need to be a thing anymore. 2017, 2018, the first time we really heard about all the tainted supplement, tainted supplement. Oh, tainted supplement. Oh, then I went to Iceland and I ate some meat and it had clenbuterol in it. Oh, I was eating, I ate tainted meat in Iceland. I remember that excuse came out and it's like, did some research and it's like, tainted meat in Iceland was a thing apparently. Oh, like, really? Back in the 80s. Oh, and it's so like, yo, that, that's, <laughs> that hasn't been an excuse in a while. Like, bullshit. <laughs> the lawyer would hear about this thing possibly coming down the pipeline and he would reach out to these people in whatever fashion he might do it and he would say, hey, here's a playbook. Choose one of the seven options for where that thing could have possibly come from. Why would it be in there? It's going to be do very good for your PR. All these people are walking around as personal billboards and you don't want to look bad in the space so it's going to look much better if you say that you had a tainted supplement or you're going to eat contaminated meat or some shit like that. So that was 2017, 2018. The year is now 2022 and people understand that you can actually say those sorts of things. So let's say that you're an athlete, one of maybe, I don't know how many are going to happen, 30 of them, 40 of them this year are going to come out and they're all going to be taking a supplement that was contaminated. Are you going to believe every single one of them? No. They saw that in 2017, 2018, people were responsive to that. And they're going to type up their own little Instagram post without the help of a lawyer and they're going to say some dumb shit. Like the person on the Clydesdale podcast. I don't remember his name. His name is important. His team is important to me. 
people kept on saying it's like, oh, I remember the name of the team. I think it was Shoe Fly. And I don't know that for sure, so don't quote me on it. But I don't care to look into the team. I don't care to figure out what this guy's name is. I care about the words that were coming out of his mouth. And I think Jason CF Media picked up on some of these things too. What he said is that his buddy gave him a bag of pills. Here, this bag of pills, it made me hit all of my goals in a month. Have fun. Take it. It should probably help you with your goals. I know that they're rather similar to mine as a CrossFitter. Go along your merry way. That should be the first red flag with anyone with an IQ over 60 in their head, on their shoulders. You are in a drug-tested sport where you have the possibility of competing at the games where you know that there are drug tests being done, and you're just going to take a bag of pills. And in this bag of pills, all of your hopes and dreams will come true. How stupid do you have to be? I'll tell you how stupid you have to be. You've got to be so stupid that you're also then going to say that there was a contaminated supplement that you were taking. And oh, I'm going to ask and see if it, my B sample is any different. Well, you know what? It's never any different because you didn't take a contaminated supplement. You took a bag full of fucking cartery, which is exactly what it's called, by the way. It's not called GW1516. It's GW501516. 50 is always missing. GW501516. You can then call it cartery. But if you were watching the president of the United States talk on a podium, and he's like, we have to help all of these people who are chasing the dragon. You would sit there and you'd go, what did he just say? Uh, is he talking about heroin? I think he's talking about heroin, but why does he keep on saying chasing the dragon? So every time I see GW1516, I think that's not what it's fucking called. And stop calling it endurable. How stupid is everybody? It's like, Ugh! there's no information about this, which is why I needed to make this video about it. It is called Carterine or chemical name GW501516. Remember that forever. The thing that we do know at this point is that it isn't a SARM. Everyone I talk to seems to understand that it isn't a SARM, which is a specific androgen receptor modulator. Now let's talk about the difference of all these things that are under the performance enhancing drugs umbrella. You've got steroids, which are usually looked at as anabolic. You've got SARMs, which are specific androgen receptor modulators. And then you've got carterine, which is a PPAR agonist. And I don't remember exactly what those things stand for, but it's like peroxine. And it's a receptor similar to SARMs where they go after the androgen receptors. These are going after the receptors that will help you mobilize fat in your body and use fat as a fuel source all of a sudden. So it's going to help you start burning fat as a fuel. It's going to start mimicking the effect of exercise without you even exercising. It's called exercise in a bottle. That's a real thing. I've heard people say that, and that's not dumb. You can take freaking carterine and you can never work out a day in your life, but you're going to have the exact same effect as if you were exercising. Your HDL is going to go up, your LDL is going to go down, your cholesterol is going to look better, your heart's going to become healthier. And then if you were to hop on a bike, all of a sudden, let's say you average a two minute pace per 500 on the bike, all of a sudden you can average a 150 pace on the bike per 500. And all you had to do is pop a pill. If there's one thing that you should pick up from the supplement industry, it's that the things that are safe to take do not work. That isn't entirely true because protein of course works and creatine of course works and you have all the multivitamins and the fish oils and all of that stuff's important and you should use sugar and salt and all that shit but most of the things that claim to be the best thing ever usually are just making claims on nothing people have reached out and asked about terkesterone i was always telling them like don't take terkesterone it's not going to do anything if it did anything it would be illegal so i think i might have gotten off track a little bit but the gist of all of that is that there's anabolic steroids there's SARMs and then there's this carterine which is the ppar agonist and these two have not been around for that long. And I think carterine in specific has been around since the 90s. And the anabolics have been around for a very, very long time. Think about testosterone. It's been around so long and it's had so much research done into it that if you were to wander into a TRT clinic right now, you can go get prescriptions for it. That and things like Anivar, which is also an anabolic. And Winstrol, you can get those things prescribed from your doctor for whatever the fuck reason at this point. Testosterone, good. The other ones, not as good. But you can understand that there are a lot of studies done on these. Now, SARMs, new. We want to talk about carterine in particular. Carterine came around in the 90s, and in about a decade, they found out that, hey, all of these things are happening. It's got all of these health benefits. It's exercise in a bottle. But then they also found that it was giving the rats that they were experimenting on cancer. So when they found that out, they stopped experimenting on these things. They cut it off at the Ds, but that doesn't mean that the athletes or the people who had heard about these studies were going to stop taking it. WADA then banned it in 2008, I believe. So for about 15 years, people, I think it was maybe 2009, because in the 2008 Olympics, they were actually allowed to take it, something that actually worked, everybody was really taking. And the thing that I know about CrossFit and I've picked up on CrossFit is that we are behind the bell curve on a lot of these things. So if the Olympics had it kind of knocked off in 2009 and Ricky Gard popped for it in 2017, all you got to do is look at what's going on in that big sport right there. And maybe five to 10 years later, CrossFit's going to have some sort of a debacle facing it. But the big reason I was talking about the lifespan of these things is because with testosterone, they've had all these studies done with Carterine, they stopped it after they found out that it was given
giving the rats cancer. Is it really giving the rats cancer? There's an entire discussion on that that I don't think I really want to get into right here, but the important part is that with that cutoff of the testing of it, they don't really know the half-life of the compound. Why is that important? Why is it that everybody gets positive? Why isn't it that they ever test positive for the Anivars or the Decadaroblins or the Winstrals or any of those things that we've also heard of before? Well, those have been around for a long time. I mentioned that too, right? And when things are around for as long as those things have been around, they do enough studies on them where they can really figure out the half-lives of them safely so they can dose them correctly and so that if they need to want to do it, athletes can pass the drug tests. So if you take Anivar, you have two to three weeks to get that thing out of your system. Call it a month and you're safe to have that gone. If you were to take something like a Nandrolone decanoate, which is Decadaroblin, and you do CrossFit, you're kind of fucked because that's in your blood for a year. You pee into a cup, it's been nine months, it's still in there. That's not something that CrossFitters with a freaking brain on their shoulders would take. But they also know that those things are factual because they have been around for almost a hundred years. In comes carterine, GW501516. Quick Google search will tell you that it's got a half-life of uh, 24 hours. And then if you go to another website, you're going to see that after seven half-lives, it's undetectable in your blood. It's okay, seven half-lives, so it'll be out of my blood in a week. So I'll call it two weeks to be safe, and then it's gone for good. And I'm not going to pop on a drug test. Go on to another website, and it might tell you that it'll be out in a month. But the thing is, you're seeing different anecdotal opinions on these things. So now I've got a website here, and I'm not going to tell you what my website is. You might be able to Google search and figure it out, but mine, it tells you it's got a 24-hour half-life, and its detection time is one month. But it also says that there are cases where a 60-day detection time was possible. How is this going to happen? How is this possible? Well, it's possible because unlike testosterone, Anivar, Decadaroblin, Prebabolin, and all of those drugs that have been around for 100 years and have had 100 different studies done on them, this one stopped having studies done on it after it found out that it was giving the rats cancer. We don't want to give humans cancer. Why would we do any more studies on this? Well, I guess we found one study where the half-life was 24 hours, but everybody's different. Some people, it's going to sit in you for 60 days. I would bet that for some people, it's going to sit in you for 90 days. For some people, it might sit in you for six months. So every time that I see that a CrossFitter has popped for GW501516, I was like, these fucking people go on the internet and they expect what they read on the internet to be true. What is true is they reap the benefit. They see all of the cardiovascular enhancements and it's energy in a bottle and blah, blah, blah. And this might be the first time that they're going to hear that it's like, oh, okay, they don't really know what the half-life is and this is why everybody keeps popping for it. And on the topic of half-lives, when that Clydesdale interview was going on and the athlete said, there was trace amounts in my system, so I'm going to see if I can uh, get a two-year span instead of a four-year ban because there wasn't that much in there. You know why there was only that much in there? Because you said that you stopped taking it in March. You know why you stopped taking it in March? Because you did a Google search telling you that it would have been out of you in a month, so you tried to play it safe. And if your competition was in, I don't know, late April, early May, like, oh, okay, I should be good to go by then because the Google search told me I'd be okay. So your bag of pills that you're saying were contaminated supplements, which weren't contaminated, it was literally carterine given to you by your buddy, you stopped taking it in March. And let's say for the sake of half-lives, you had a hundred things in your blood. And every week or so, that went down to 90, down to 80. It's like a gas tank emptying, right? By the time you got to your competition, the gas tank was almost on empty, but it wasn't on empty. And the thing about this gas tank that I'm speaking about metaphorically, when it was at a hundred, you could go a thousand miles an hour. You were just reaping all the benefits of a supercar. And you're like, look at this, this is cool. So you went from a Prius and you turned into a Tesla Plaid and you can go zero to 60 in freaking two seconds. And you were a fucking Prius, right? And then that amount of time that you stopped taking it and your gas tank was emptying metaphorically, you were no longer a Tesla Plaid, you were just a regular Tesla. But you're still not a Prius and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! If you only have a fraction of a fraction of a micro amount of fucking stuff in your urine, you, uh, it just makes me so fucking mad. And it makes me so mad that there's people out there that are going to believe that. And it also makes me mad that he's like just going to try to look at some other people in the 2017, 2018 years that said they took a tainted supplement. And he's like, okay, I'm going to make up an Instagram post. And I might even tell my teammates that I got a tainted supplement. But then he's also so stupid to the point where he's going to be on it and say, I took a bag of pills. I stopped taking it in March. I don't know why there's this much in me still. He also then said, says that CrossFit should do a little bit of something to give us a little bit of a heads up on what we can and cannot take. This might be the first time in history that I think that CrossFit is pretty good at what they're doing here. Everybody thinks that of my opinion, the CrossFitters at the top are being shielded by CrossFit. I don't actually think that. That's not what I think. I think that the CrossFitters that are good and are possibly taking things are so smart and they're ahead of the curve and they're not stupid.
stupid like this guy taking a bag full of pills. I think that there's enough money in the sport that they've got people who might be making up their own compounds or using something that isn't detectable in WADA yet. That's what I think. I don't think CrossFit's shielding people. It actually kind of makes me upset. So this, I know I'm like, I don't know, 15 minutes into this video or whatever, but that's a pretty big takeaway from me is that I don't think CrossFit's like, oh, uh, yep, Matt Frazier, uh, where you need to protect that guy, take whatever you want. We, we're not going to rat you out. I don't think that they do that. And let's say that there is an athlete out there taking something. There is a supplement out there. It's called GW7042. And it does the exact same thing as GW501516. And I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that that isn't on the WADA band list. I'm also sure that nobody takes it because it is proven that the second you take it, it enlarges your heart. And that is not a good thing. So if you heard me say that, don't take it. Literally, it kills you the second you take it. But there's a chance that there's something like that out there that doesn't kill you the second that you take it. But it has the exact same benefits, but they also don't know that the athletes are taking it. That is my opinion of this stuff. So if I were to wrap up this entire video as quick as I can, I would say stop listening to these people saying that they're taking contaminated supplements because at this point it's become idiocracy and they're saying it because it's the thing to say at this point because it worked at one point it's going to work for me and then they're going to try to defend themselves and they're going to sound like a fucking idiot because they literally rat themselves out and then they're going to say some stupid shit like crossfit should do a better job every time that i say crossfit should do a better job if i sound that stupid i really hope people would call me out for it so this isn't the video that i wanted to make but i think it's the video that was necessary because I do have some insight onto this subject. What do you guys think? How much of this stuff did you know? How much of this stuff now makes sense to you? Throw in the comments section. Andrew Hiller, out.